positive news from Malaysia, where legalization of vaping comes into effect on the 3rd of August. In Brazil, possible movements towards legalization and regulation of safer nicotine products. And in the U.S., more businesses under threat because of the new FDA oversight on synthetic nicotine. Welcome and thank you for joining us again. We will start with Malaysia and we will speak with Samsul Arafin Kamal from MOVE about regulations coming into effect on the 3rd of August. We will also cover regulation in Brazil and an overview of what is going on in the United States with synthetic nicotine. Malaysia's Ministry of Health has finalized and the government has approved legislation to regulate vaping as of the 3rd of August. This move to regulate vaping is important, especially in Southeast Asia and the wider Asia-Pacific region. It has, of course, raised questions, especially around the youth ban on smoking and vaping products as of 2035. <laughs> We felt it best to speak with Samsul Arafin Kamal from MOVE Malaysia. Samsul, welcome and thank you for taking the time to answer questions around the regulation in Malaysia. First up, as of the 3rd of August, Malaysia will have a regulated vaping market, yes? That's correct. How will this affect access to e-liquid, flavors and nicotine? Um, in terms of access to nicotine and non-nicotine e-liquids, uh, the thing is that based on the regulation, uh, all um, nicotine liquids need to be registered with the Ministry of Health. So uh, we have the time now for all the producers of liquids up to the um, 3rd of August for them to get their liquids registered. And if it is not registered, then they are not able to sell it uh, in, in, uh, in vape shops. Now, the other thing about access is that um, we've been informed that um, vape products are, won't be able to be sold on um, the general vape, vape stores that we see now in Malaysia or in Kuala Lumpur. They are only going to be designated to specialized stores. Right, big specialized stores that will only sell vape liquids and um, heat not burn products. What is the situation around open tank systems? Right, uh, we have had a meeting with the uh, Minister of Health uh, about two and a half months ago. He was informed at that point, the Minister of Health uh, stand was that it's only going to be closed system and ports. But we informed him that, that if you really want this uh, regulation um, framework to work, it got to be um, open. Uh, the system got to be an open one and also a, a closed system. So uh, looking at his feedback, at this point, there is no clear answer in terms of uh, upon once we are regulated, whether the, whether the uh, uh, VIP system is only going to be a uh, closed system only or both closed and open system. We don't know it yet. Uh, the, the answer is not really clear yet at this point. And lastly, how do people there in Malaysia feel about the proposed smoke-free, vape-free generation? Right. Well, it depends on who you're talking to. Uh, I think if you talk to the general public, uh, to be honest with you, uh, this is um, a law that is very much welcome, which means that uh, they're going to put a stop to uh, smokers in terms of whole generation, those who are born uh, after 2005, in fact, um, uh, won't be able to, to purchase uh, any vape or tobacco products. So generally speaking, the, the public, uh, uh, they welcome this law. But again, as I said, it depends on who you're talking to. And But us, uh, in terms of MOVE, our stance is that we do welcome this because ultimately our goal is um, to make sure that uh, people uh, quit smoking and if you don't smoke there's no reason for you to vape as well so our stand is that we do welcome it. word has come that brazil may be closer to regulation of safer nicotine products than ever before 
my country, vaping is not legal. The regulatory process there started in 2019, and currently the government has just completed the public consultation phase on the partial regulatory impact analysis report that the government had developed. According to Claudio Texiera of ARDT Iberoamerica, this means that the citizens had 30 days to submit their commentaries, technical information, etc., about each part of the report and its attachments. Then, the process continues with a focus group to analyze the contributions. In June, the focus group must present a draft of the proposal for regulation, and another public consultation will be carried out. The focus group will then review the documentation received in the second public consultation and present the final regulatory instrument in September. The final decision is due in December. Bolsonaro! The only possible hitch in this process is that Brazil is holding their elections in October. And if President Bolsonaro is not re-elected, it is possible the entire process will need to start from the beginning. We will keep you updated. As of the 15th of March, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration can now regulate e-cigarettes that contain synthetic nicotine, a shift that could slash the number of vaping products available in the United States. The U.S. Congress passed a bill that expanded the definition of the FDA-regulated tobacco product to include those that use lab-made nicotine as well as traditional tobacco-derived nicotine. This will no doubt have an adverse effect on vape businesses in the states, with many being forced to close. Danielle Jones, president of CASA, wonders if it's a cynical ploy by the FDA. First, the PMTA process, and now this. So FDA waited until enough companies were using synthetic nicotine so that they could construct a narrative that essentially demonizes these companies by saying, oh, look how bad they are. They're using synthetic nicotine as a loophole. They're trying to avoid FDA regulation. They're trying to keep, you know, poisoning the children. And now here we are, you know, we're going to stop this bad behavior and we're going to, you know, swoop in and save the children. It's, it's interesting to see that it sort of played into this narrative that they wanted to create in terms of the timing. Because in the early days, you know, nobody was really using synthetic nicotine. It's expensive. Um, it was it still is and can be difficult to, to get. Um, there's a limited supply of it. And so the fact that they waited until they could, they had enough, you know, evidence to create this narrative of how, you know, saying how bad the vape companies are, that was the really interesting part about this. Scope Livestream is back for World Vape Day and World No Tobacco Day. Starting at 7 a.m. Chicago, 1 p.m. London, each day will feature eight hours of live streamed content from consumer THR organizations across the globe discussing the importance of tobacco harm reduction. Wait a second. You're telling me that that all this while I've been trying to get off of cigarettes. I finally got off cigarettes. Now you're going to make me use something that tastes like a cigarette? I mean, you're like that's like that's like a nail in the coffin for a lot of people. Please join us to learn what is happening and ask questions of the advocates directly. The Global Forum on Nicotine is back in person from the 16th to the 18th of June in Warsaw, Poland. The theme for this year's conference is Tobacco Harm Reduction Here for Good. If you can't be there in Poland, you can register at gfn.net.co to access the virtual content that will be made available during the conference. Thank you for joining us. As I've mentioned previously, we must never give up hope. The situation in Malaysia is proof that the future is here. Access and choice to safer nicotine products is not just a pipe dream. We will do this. Take care.